Let's take a look at managing transport rules in Exchange using PowerShell. So the first thing, either need to be inside of the Exchange Management Shell or have an Exchange PowerShell session open. And in my case, I've got an Exchange PowerShell session open. So the first thing is for the new transport rule commandlet, which we'll be using to create new transport rules. It has a lot of parameters. So I encourage you to check out the help. Um, I always have that open while I'm creating new transport rules because it's very helpful. That's why it's called the help. So the first transport rule we'll be creating here as an example is just a really simple one. So I'm calling it, giving it the name tag external. I'm using the from scope parameter to, tell, to apply to messages that are from folks that are not in the organization. And then using the prepend subject parameter to tell it to take the action of prepending the subject uh, with the value that I gave it here. I'm splatting these to the transport rule variable. And if you're not sure about PowerShell splatting, check out our other snip on splatting in PowerShell. And then I'm going to pass that variable to the new transport rule. There you go. So it telling, it's telling us here that it created a new transport rule. And the other thing is that transport rules have a description property. And we can look at that using the get transport rule commandlet, giving it the name of the transport rule, piping it to the select object commandlet and selecting the description property. And the description is actually a plain English description of what the transport rule does. So it's very helpful to take a look at that when creating rules, or if you're trying to figure out what a rule does. So the other example I've got is adding a disclaimer. This is a pretty common thing. I'm sure you've seen an email with a disclaimer on it. And so to create a disclaimer, well, we first got to give it a name and I'm using just the name of disclaimer. And we're going to apply this to messages that are sent from people in the organization sent to people not in the organization. And then I'm using the apply HTML disclaimer text parameter to tell it what text to apply into the disclaimer. And then using the apply HTML disclaimer location parameter to tell it where to put it. And in this case, I'm selecting append. You can also prepend it if you'd like. And then using the apply HTML disclaimer fallback action parameter to tell it to wrap the message in case it fails. And the other options there are ignore and reject. So I'll go ahead and splat this to the transport rule variable, pass it to the new transport rule. And there we got, we got good output there. So I'm going to use the get transport rule commandlet again and look at that description property. And there we go. We can see what that message actually does. And then the last example that I've got here is to create a transport rule that has a few exceptions in it as well. So in this case, I'm giving it the name of CC accounting on invoices and POs using the from scope parameter to tell it to apply to messages sent from not in the organization and using the sent to scope parameter to tell it to apply to messages sent to folks that are in the organization and using the subject contains words parameter to tell it to apply to messages that have invoice or purchase order in the subject and then using the copy to parameter to tell it to take action and CC accounting if uh, the subject does contain those words. And then I'm using accept if sent to member of parameter to tell it to accept messages sent to the accounting department because they're obviously receiving the email anyway. And this can be a distribution group or a security group. And then also using the accept if message type matches parameter to tell it to not apply to calendaring messages. And then right below that, I've got a list of all of the other values of that accept if message type matches parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and splat those to the transport rule variable pass them to the new transport rule commandlet and got good output. So let's take a look at that description again, using the same command as from before. And there we go. You can see now in this one, we've got a new header of except if the message and then tells us what the exceptions are. So the next thing I want to take a look at is using the set transport rule commandlet. And this one gets pretty complicated as well. There are a lot of parameters, very similar to the new transport rule commandlet. So I've got another link to the documentation. I encourage you to check it out if you're ever working with transport rules. Um, so first, let's take a look at the priority because it's pretty important on how your transport rules are going to work. The first thing is we'll do is we'll use the get transport rule commandlet without any parameters. And that will show us uh, what the priorities are of the transport rules that we have in our exchange system. And the priority is the order in which they're run. So when a message comes in, it goes from priority zero on up to whatever the highest priority is. 
And so to change the priority, we use the set transport rule commandlet, give it the name of the transport rule that we want to change, and tell it what priority to make that rule. So in this case, I'm setting disclaimer to priority zero. And we use the git transport rule commandlet again to validate. And you can see that it just moved everything else down. So the next thing we'll take a look at is modifying an existing rule. So in this case, I'm going to take the tag external transport rule and add an exception to it. So I'm using the accept if sent to member of parameter to tell it to accept the IT department. So this way, this rule will not apply to members of the IT department group, and it can be a security or distribution group. So after running that and adding that exception, we can again look at the description, and we can see that it has that exception listed there. So the last thing I want to take a look at before we get to removing transport rules is the state of the transport rules. So if we look at git transport rule again, you'll notice that it has each of them have a state and these are all enabled. So when new transport rules are created, they're created in the enabled state. Well, we can disable those using the disable transport rule commandlet and give it the name of the transport rule. So I'll go ahead and disable the CC accounting rule. And I've also got the confirm false flag just so that it doesn't prompt me. And we'll verify that that rule was disabled. And what that means is that Exchange will not take action on anything in that rule, but that rule is not deleted. So all of the settings that you've put into it are still there, and it's just waiting for you to enable it. And to enable it, we use the Enable Transport Rule commandlet and give it the name of the transport rule. So we'll go ahead and enable that again. And then we can verify that it was enabled using the Git Transport Rule commandlet. There we go, all enabled. So the last thing is removing transport rules. So to remove a transport rule, we just use the remove transport rule commandlet and give it the name of the rule that we want to remove. And then I'm also using the confirm false flag just so that it doesn't prompt me. And then finally, we'll validate that that rule was removed. So that's how you manage transport rules in Exchange using PowerShell.